Kevin O'Leary, aka Mr. Wonderful, is a Canadian businessman, author, politician, and television personality on ABC's Shark Tank. He sits in one of the shark chairs, offering to make a deal with entrepreneurs, or ultimately saying, you're dead to me. O'Leary has contributed over $8,543,000 on air, according to Sharkalytics. According to his own words, he's had many successes on the show and some pretty big wins. Groovebook is a photo printing app subscription service that was sold to Shutterfly for $14.5 million. However, Mr. Wonderful hasn't only acquired success stories. There are plenty of deals he passed on or was outbid by another shark or he just made a bad call and invested in something that soon proved to be a pretty bad idea. Let's take a look at 10 Shark Tank deals that Kevin O'Leary regrets investing in. The Kate app helps people being unfaithful in their relationships wipe their phones, so their secretive messages are not visible to their spouses. A West Palm Beach police officer developed it after a colleague got divorced because his wife saw his text messages between him and his mistress. The founder of Kate app claims he didn't set out to sell a cheater's app, but marketing for the app includes the word mistress and advertises tools to block calls and texts so your spouse doesn't see them. Though it was strange that a product like this entered the show, Sharks Kevin O'Leary and Damon John teamed up to invest $70,000 for a 35% stake in it. After the episode aired, they got 10,000 new downloads, and most of the new customers were women. However, it looks like it didn't go far. The last update from the company's Twitter account is from 2013. There are no news articles about it since that time and the website is down. One of the many weird cat businesses that made it onto Shark Tank was Cat Wine by Apollo Peak. The founder loved wine and spending time with his cat, so he created a non-alcoholic wine that was safe for cats to drink. The Colorado company uses organic herbs in their Apollo Peak bottles of Moscato and Chardonnay, and they had organic beets for their red wines. Supposedly, the cat wine causes cats to become more mellow and calm. It also costs $16 for a 12-ounce bottle. Model. Surprisingly, when Apollo Peak was pitched on Shark Tank in April, they received an investment of $100,000 in exchange for 20% equity from wine connoisseur Kevin O'Leary. Though it is still on the market, many people are still skeptical about whether it would make a lot of money. Nikki Pope appeared on the Shark Tank hoping to get an investment from one of the sharks to be able to grow her toy renting service called Toy Guru. The company called itself the Netflix of toys and allowed customers to rent toys for each month. Since kids indeed get tired of their toys pretty quickly today, the business seemed like a good idea. So Mark Cuban and Kevin O'Leary invested $200,000 for 35%. However, the company filed for bankruptcy. A couple of years ago, there were signs of Toy Guru going back bankrupt, especially after they posted a banner on their website claiming they couldn't take on any new members because of an explosive growth and officially closed in 2016. When asked what their worst deal was in an interview, both Cuban and O'Leary called out Toy Guru. In season 1, Kwame Kude pitched a web-based company that buys back and sells some of the 10% of all unused gift cards each year in the US. He asked for $150,000 in exchange for a 30% equity stake, but got the deal for $200,000 for 50% equity stake, while Robert Herjavec and Kevin O'Leary also got a 5% royalty with the deal. After appearing on the show, Gift Card Rescue was featured in articles within the New York Times Forbes, Wall Street Journal, and a list of many other wildly familiar publications. Having such a large increase in sales and popularity, this company became one of the most successful ones to have been aired on Shark Tank. However, as reported by the Baltimore Sun, Gift Card Rescue shut down in 2016, not too long after their Shark Tank appearance. Daniel Wood and David Marchinsky pitched their product in Season 4 and made a deal with Kevin O'Leary and Robert Herjavec. Focus Designs is the maker of the Self-Balancing Unicycle, or the SBU for short. After they asked for $300,000 in exchange for a 10% equity stake, they managed to strike a deal for $300,000 for a 33% equity stake. Since then, they added two new versions of the SBU to their product line, and the unicycle was featured on popular shows such as Myth 
Mythbusters and Tosh.0. However, while the team behind Focus Designs all seem to still be involved, the Amazon product links are broken as the website returns an error, and their social media pages have been sitting untouched since September of 2015. It seems like Robert was correct about the marketing problems for this type of device. Paperbox Pilot sells sticker kits that turn a plain old ordinary box into imaginative airplanes, fire engines, and race cars. When Brian and Noah came into the tank in Season 6, they were hoping to attract a shark to invest $35,000 into their business. They also brought along another board member, 5-year-old younger brother Milo, who Brian explained was the CFO of the company, the Chief Fun Officer. Since Kevin O'Leary is the shark most suited to the children's toy industry, as the Canadian-born businessman originally made his fortune with the sale of the learning company to Mattel in 1999, it doesn't come as a surprise that he was interested. He managed to strike a deal and invested $35,000 in exchange for 50% equity stake. However, Paperbox Pilot's business has not made any great strides forward in the year and a half since the first appearance on Shark Tank. Now, many items seem to be out of stock and the company's social media has not been updated since 2018. Yubo was another toy-related product that O'Leary was attracted to, and unfortunately, another one that failed as well. Yubo is a new kind of lunchbox featuring unique changeable faceplates that allow kids to update the look of their lunchbox as often as they'd like. In Season 5, Cindy Pedrazzi, Paul Pedrazzi, and Dan Harden pitched the product to the Sharks and managed to strike a deal with Kevin O'Leary and Robert Herjavec for $150,000 in exchange for a 20% equity stake. After being featured on the show, they've launched a few new product lines such as a washable tote and larger food storage solutions for teen adult consumers with large appetites. And though it seemed that their business was going pretty well, after 10 years in the business, the company announced that it was closing down in early 2019. Classroom Jams is an educational record label and publishing house designed to get students into learning about classic works of literature. As a teacher, Mark Furigay knew tough literature topics like Shakespeare were challenging for students and came up with a solution after a student told him they wanted something they could relate to. When Mark finished his pitch, all of the sharks were impressed, so they all agreed to buy the entire company for $250,000, with each of them having 20% equity. However, the deal came with the agreement of Mark receiving 5% royalties from all future sales, and an option to buy one-sixth of the company back. Unfortunately, despite the backing of the Sharks, the company doesn't seem to have taken off. The albums are currently unpurchasable, and it seems Classroom Jams has never had any sales. Though these were all the deals Kevin surely regrets making, the next one may be on his list of regrets as well, however for the fact that he managed to miss out on it. By the time Clark and his business partner Cameron Smith appeared on Shark Tank in 2014, Kodiak Cakes was already on target shelves. They applied for the show in hopes of securing a $500,000 investment in exchange for a 10% stake in the company, a significant portion of which would be used to pay for product placement at other big name retailers. The Sharks were skeptical, but three of them still made offers, one of them being O'Leary. He teamed up with Barbara Cochran to offer Clark $500,000 for 50% of Kodiak Cakes. However, he declined the offer and left the show without any funding. After the episode aired, the company's sales at Target started to rapidly increase and they soon became the top-selling pancake mix brand at the store. The last one on the list is actually a reverse situation where a shark loves a product but the presenter has a big problem with them. Manish Sethi came into the tank asking for $500,000 in exchange for 3.14% equity of his company called Pavlock that manufactures wristbands which shocks its wearer when performing a bad habit through either a manual or automatic prompt. However, Sethi's pitch went so off the rails that it ended with Kevin O'Leary calling Sethi an A 
a-hole and telling him to get out of there. The product is inspired by a decades-old Pavlovian research, but when Mark Cuban asked Sethi if there were any peer-reviewed studies on the effectiveness of his invention, Sethi could only point to an eight-person pilot program with the University of Massachusetts at Boston and the research that predated Pavlov. Cuban and Sethi started arguing with each other, but when O'Leary eventually told Sethi he was intrigued and made an offer, Sethi refused it saying, I would take an offer from anybody besides Mr. Wonderful. He clarified that it was indeed personal, and that's when the altercation happened. Thank you for checking this video out, and don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe for new videos every day. Turn that bell notification on and comment down below that you subscribed, and we'll make sure to reply and thank as many of you as we possibly can. Once again, thank you for watching and see you next time.